Welcome back to Wayne TV. I'm Joel Gilly. I have some very special friends from the Wayne County Public Library with me today. We have Megan and Anna. Welcome, ladies. How are y'all? Great. How are you? Uh, doing well. It's a busy time at the library right now. Always. It is. It always, always. is. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> There's never a dull moment. No. The list of programs, if you guys have never been to the library, is insane. And I know that's not what we're supposed to be talking about today, but um, you know, I follow the, the library on mm -hmm. Facebook and there's just always something mm -hmm. happening. Yeah. And like the people that are commenting like love the stuff that y'all do. Yeah, that so hats is the, off to y'all. That's the easiest way to keep up with our programs is to follow us on Facebook. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're all up Absolutely. there. But today we're talking about Wayne County Reads. And that is a program that has been going for how many years now? I think it started in 2004. It's been a while. Mm -hmm. And this is one book mm -hmm. that everybody reads. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about it. Exactly. Right? It's kind of like a big book report for everybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but hopefully more fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So talk a little bit about uh, Wayne County Reads and what our book is this year. Yeah, absolutely. This year we chose Game Changers by Art Chansky. And so that book focuses on the story of Charlie Scott at the University of North Carolina. Um, so if you're a Carolina fan, you'll be thrilled. It would and if we're not. It, it'll be <laughs> fine. It'll be fine. Um, so as a somebody who comes from a divi divide household, I completely get yeah. both sides of the can't argument. Can't believe you picked that book. No, yeah, I can't either. Um, but so Charlie Scott was the first scholarship African American um, athlete at UNC, and Dean Smith recruited him. So the book really focuses on the integration of athletics in Chapel Hill um, during the late '60s and focuses on Chapel Hill in general. Yeah. Um, you know, Dean Smith during his first few years wasn't as popular as Dean Smith the legend is now. Yeah. Um, so it kind of focuses on that. This is a guy who, you know, his career isn't really set at Carolina yet. He's um, going on a limb recruiting the first African-American player. Um, the Chapel Hill outside of the school is really going through a time of kind of chaos with the civil rights movement and it kind of focuses on all of that. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. I haven't read anything about the book so I yeah. didn't know all that so that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of North Carolina history in exactly. there too which yeah. I think mm -hmm. is even and if you're sports. not a North Carolina fan yeah you still get mm -hmm. that. Uh, so how do, they, how do you all pick the book every year? Well typically it's a fiction book okay. so this I think is the first nonfiction title that we've had. Um, we try to pick books that would appeal to a wide audience and have enough like substance to them that we can do a series of programs around them. So we thought, you know, we've taken a break because of COVID. So this is our first Wayne County Reads since I think 2020, mm -hmm. all the programs got canceled. Yeah. Um, so it's been a while. So we were like, we need to find a book that a lot of people will enjoy. So we're like, this book it's about sports, it's about North Carolina, it's about UNC, it's about basketball, it's about you know social change in North Carolina and the wider country. So we're like, even if you don't really love sports, you may be interested in the writing style, yeah. or you, if you're not a Carolina fan, you'd be interested in the history aspect of it. So we really think this book was a good choice, mm -hmm. um, and we're really super excited about our programs. Yeah. So, yeah. This is also like a big collaboration too. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of community partners yes. that are a part. Of I guess what is for people who don't know anything about it, what is the overall goal of Wayne County Reads? It's just to get our community together, to be reading and talking about a book together, um, to attend programs together, and just to have kind of a wider community conversation that is focused around a particular topic. Okay, cool. And who are some of the, the partners? I know you have a cheat sheet. I do have a cheat sheet, but I'm going to try it. <laughs> okay. So Wayne Community College, mm -hmm. Seymour Johnson Air Force Base Library, University of Mount Olive, um, Wayne Country Day. We have Wayne County Public Schools. Mm -hmm. The Paramount Theater um, really loved what we were doing, and they actually donated the use of their theater for free for one of our bigger events. Um, Literacy Connections. Mm -hmm. We partner with a wide array. There's of people a solid for it. list. Mm -hmm. When you look at that list, you yes. know you start seeing a lot of different walks of life yeah. in there, mm -hmm. and I think that's what's pretty cool mm -hmm. because we all know that like getting that many organizations together yeah. for one thing is mm -hmm. a challenge, mm -hmm. and sure. so hats off for figuring yeah. out how to do that. Uh, let's talk about some of the programs that we've got. Absolutely. There's a, there's three programs. There's three. three? Mm -hmm. So who wants to talk about this? So the first program, um, the author is coming. So Art Chansky is coming, and we'll be doing a, a moderated book discussion. So talking about his process for writing and researching the book. Um, he's a sports writer, so he writes a lot about Carolina basketball. This is not his first book about Carolina basketball. Um, so he's really excited to talk about it. So that's our first program. Um, the second one is the really big one at the Paramount. So Phil Ford is coming. 
um, and Dick Bedore is coming. So they know each other, they've known each other a long time, so it'll be a kind of a conversation about Dean Smith and Carolina basketball and then what it was like for Phil to play um, kind of on the heels of Charlie Scott. Yeah. Um, he's from Rocky Mount, so playing ball in Eastern North Carolina, what that was like during the time of integration and then coming to Chapel Hill immediately post-integration um, and then his experiences in the NBA and after. So we're really excited for that. Dick Bedore was the athletic director at Carolina for a number of years. He's from Rollsboro, so yeah. we're excited for that conversation. Um, and then the third one, um, we're thrilled yeah. about the third one. So, you know, the, the book focuses on Chapel Hill. The second conversation will kind of be like a wider, like regional um, discussion. And then the third one, we really wanted to talk about what was the situation like in athletics and schools, but you know, what really was the situation with like school athletics in Wayne County. Yeah. So um, we're gonna be having a panel discussion with local athletes, coaches, students that were in Wayne County during this time period um, and kind of hearing about, you know, what was school like, what was playing on a team like, maybe teams combined, um, just really kind of hearing what it was like to go through that because a lot of younger athletes maybe don't realize what that situation was all about. Um, something we've read about because we weren't around, yeah. but you know, don't have really firsthand knowledge. It's not something that's been really well documented um, for our area in particular. So we're really excited about that program. Um, and kind of to go along with that, we are soliciting some like oral histories and um, for people to bring in like photos and stuff so we can digitize them because we'll have kind of a an online exhibit to go along with that one. So we got a lot going on, but yeah. we're really, really excited. That's awesome. You know, there's, not to not to sidetrack, but there's so many really cool programs and it's these kind of programs I think that are the coolest. And I, I'm guilty about not making the time to do it myself, but every time I do find myself at one of them, I think it's so cool because like you said, like it's those conversations locally mm -hmm. where the, the younger generation gets to learn the history of the local mm -hmm. community. Uh, and you guys have an impressive local history group too that, that does so mm -hmm. much but you know if we don't pay attention to our history you know what do we know like I, I think that's so cool to have that uh, that resource right here in Wayne County um, which one are you guys most excited about you said the, the, the third one is your most I think I'm, I'm excited about all of them but I think the third one will be really interesting just because it's locally focused yeah mm -hmm. we had kind of an, an initial planning um, panel, I guess, like a group of athletes um, and coaches came to the library to kind of talk about it and see if it's something people would be interested in. And we were like, we don't really know how this is going to go. It yeah. ended up being like a three hour conversation because everyone was so excited to talk about, you know, them playing sports and coaching and all the great kids that they played with and that they're still friends with. Um, but also like how the schools kind of merged yeah. and what that was like. So it was really fascinating. So I think it'll be really interesting. Yeah, we didn't, you know, um, I was a history major. Anna was kind of a, kind of a history major. Yeah. <laughs> she focused more on Russian, um, I, but I was an American history major. And so I've spent a lot of time studying, you know, civil rights and integration, yeah. but it never did it cross my mind that things had to, decisions had to be made like, what school mascot do you have now? What school colors do you mm -hmm. have? And all of, yeah, all of that stuff had to be accounted for and changed mm -hmm. and, you know, compromises had to be made. And they talked about that a lot yeah. and that was really interesting. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Also, I understand that you guys had a pretty cool Zoom call recently, right? We did. We got to talk with Phil Ford and yeah. Dictador and that was fantastic. Well, what did y'all talk about? Anything good? Um, well, we prepared for the meeting. Yeah. So I think people are going to really have a good time. You can tell that these two men have known each other for a very long time. Um, and they have both have a different lens on athletics. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, you know, Dick Bedore, was a Carolina graduate and went back and worked through like the admissions office and then you know ended up in the athletic department became the athletic director um, I believe after Swafford went to the ACC and so he has that kind of like I call it, yeah administrative yeah. like yeah. political viewpoint type of a lens on it whereas Phil Ford you know was this stellar basketball player at Carolina um, my husband's a diehard Carolina fan and he uh, spent many a minute lecturing me after I talked to Phil Ford yeah. <laughs> about how, you know, everybody talks about Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, but Phil Ford actually had, you know, most of the records 
until yeah. Tyler Hansborough came along. Yeah. Um, and so, and I know, you know, in my house, Phil Ford was a big name. My dad was a Carolina fan, and there's a long story about how I ended up going to Carolina, but that is basically <laughs> why, is because my dad was such a big Carolina fan. Mm. And so Phil Ford was, you know, a household name growing up, yeah. even though I, you know, am not old enough to have seen him play. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he did that, and then he ended up being an assistant coach, both you know, at Carolina and in the NBA. So he has a completely different lens. He was an NBA player for a very short amount of time, got injured. He talks openly about some struggles with substance abuse disorder. Um, and so, I mean, he just, he's a fascinating person to talk to. And we were shocked. No, both of them could not be any nicer so and nice. any more engaging. You know, I really think people are going to love it. So we have three events coming up. They're all in the month of February. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the best place for people to get more information? Our website or our Facebook page. Okay. Um, on our website, there should be a banner that says Wayne County Reads. You can go there. You can call our Goldsboro Library. Um, they'll be more than willing to talk to you about it. Cool. We have a display, um, the ebook. You can get the ebook. Right now, physical question. copies yeah. are out, um, but we're getting more physical copies in okay. just to meet the demand. But we do have lots of ebook versions available. Perfect. And if you have trouble finding an ebook version, you can always. Um, call us and we can walk you through. There's a, another way we can get them to you as cool. well. Yes. Books a Million is trying to get copies, so there should be plenty of ways to get that. So get your copy of the book mm -hmm. early yep. before everybody else yep. does. Go ahead and start Read reading it because it, it's going to be here in February. Yep. Uh, the two events, um, so the, the conversation with Phil Ford, mm -hmm. that's at the Paramount Theater. The other two events at the Gold Square right. Library. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, head to the library's website or the Facebook mm -hmm, page. Yeah. It's wcpl.org mm -hmm. for the website. And they're all on Thursday nights. So Perfect. Thursday nights yep. in February. Starting February 9th. The 9th, the mm -hmm. 16th, and the 23rd. Mm -hmm. cool. So they're right in a row. Yeah. Should be pretty easy to remember. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, get your copy of the book. Go ahead and start reading it and, uh, and join the library for some really cool conversations around this book. Yeah. So anything else, ladies? Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you all for coming right. in. And uh, we'll see you at the Wayne County Library in February.